Lars Wilkes, or Lars Felix, was a Swedish artist and activist who was known most commonly for his drawing of Prophet Muhammad back in 2007. Since around 2010, he had been living under police protection because of the amount of threats he had received from so many people globally. It's sad that I'm saying this so casually. We've just accepted that this is a thing we have to deal with, angry believers. In 2010, Al-Qaeda put a $100,000 bounty on his head, and two men tried to burn his house down in Sweden. It goes to show you that critics of Islam and apostates are not safe from Muslim vigilante mobs, not even in Sweden. So, great job, Europe. In 2014, a woman in the US pled guilty for plotting to kill him. In 2015, he was targeted at a free speech seminar. He survived, but unfortunately a film director was killed. So, as you can tell, he's been in danger for the better part of 14 years now for showing this image. I use blasphemy in a targeted manner, so there's no point of getting death threats over a drawing I didn't make. The fact that there's a serious concern about my safety for showing a JPEG should tell you a bunch about this religion and many of its followers, unfortunately. Anyway, just last week I had no idea who this man was, so why am I talking about him today? Because he died a few days ago. On Sunday, October 3rd of 2021, Wilkes was involved in a car crash. Unfortunately, neither he nor the two police officers uh, accompanying him at the time survived the burning car. The truck driver was flown to a hospital with serious injuries. The specifics of the crash are being investigated, and that's not what I'm concerned with today. I'm not going to entertain conspiracy theories without any substantial proof. But that's exactly what Muslims have been doing all over the world. I opened social media to find out that people were celebrating this man's death, especially the way that it happened. They think it's Allah's swift retaliation for the drawing only 14 years late. They're cheering about it all over the internet, either quoting a verse, thanking God, wishing more graphic deaths for all of the enemies of Islam, and so on and so forth. I understand not liking the guy. Heck, I understand wishing him death in a moment of anger, but to revel in it? This isn't about extremism or a loud minority. The majority of commentary on this news follows these themes. Muslims cheering, threatening, and warning. Okay, I guess that's the image that they're going to have to live with. A group that celebrates a burning corpse. Well, it's not far off from what this verse says. Apparently, they're going to be doing this in heaven as well. So I see where they're getting the sentiment from. Allah has such a petty, simplistic idea of justice. This is why you don't get your morality from a dusty old book. I always expect better from Muslims. I know that they are better individually than this tribalism makes them to be. And that's what disappoints me and surprises me. The amount of everyday moderate Muslims celebrating this is terrifying. On another note, what also happened that same day were floods caused by Cyclone Shaheen. It hit Oman and Iran the hardest, killing a minimum of nine people, including at least one child. This is unfortunate news. I feel for the victims, their loved ones, and everyone affected by the cyclone. So please keep that in mind as I say the following. Dear Muslims who are celebrating this man's death, are you insinuating that Allah took his sweet time plotting a fiery revenge over this man, yet he forgot to save those people? Had they been from a group that you despise, would you have reveled in their drowning? Would you have called it Allah's punishment and hoped that it was slow and painful and agonizing? The answer, I hope, is no. So it's about time that you take your blinders off and recognize the ugly direction this tribalism is steering you in. The way that you portray this Allah character plays right into my opinion of him. A petty, vengeful, obsessive, narcissistic Arab man with anger issues. He's also pretty incompetent and his priorities are questionable. Wilkes lived 14 long years since his first offense against Allah. You're talking about him now, and the images of Muhammad are resurfacing again. It's such a lousy strategy you put this issue to rest. Allah could have let the guy die of a heart attack or something without anyone noticing, but no, always a drama queen. And it's odd how God's wrath looks a lot like hardships other people go through. How many Muslims have died in a fire? How many good people have died horrible deaths? To think that Allah has a vendetta against them all just makes him look like a petty, vengeful brat. If I were you, I'd pray that Allah gets off his throne and does something about the Palestinian crisis. I'd pray to Allah to stop deforming babies through his biological miracles, or I'd pray to him to save people from the Taliban, or provide for the poor who seem to exist a lot more in Muslim countries than this supposedly evil, secular world. I'd pray that Allah does anything productive that doesn't involve his squabbles with his haters. 
but you've probably prayed for all of that already. So just throw it on the pile of unfulfilled prayers. At least Allah got killing an old man off of his list. So for humanity's sake, think critically. Think for yourselves.